Hey guys, I am DC host of Barside Jive, and I am back. My first attempt down the street didn't work out, so I've changed locations. Now I have a little bit of Wi-Fi. So I am DC. Welcome to my daily dose. It is Monday, August 12th, 2019. I got new business cards. So if you want one, just shout out. Cool. So it is August 12, 2019, and my siege on normalcy is at day number 12. It's still a freaking heat wave here in DFW, guys. It's currently 101, but feels like it's 107. So why don't they just say it's 107, right? Winds are southeast at about 12 miles per hour, but there is none right here where I'm sitting. But there's a bright side to all this weather because there's a chance of thunderstorms tomorrow. Right? Might cool things off, I hope, anyway. But you want to really know what makes me hot? And that is a text from AT&T saying that I've used all my high-speed data and now I'm using low-speed data. Well, duh, I know that, right? Because I can't even connect to anything on low speed. But it is what it is. So if you want to contribute to my high speed data fund, I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the show. <laughs> but guys, it is an important day today because it's National Vinyl Record Day. And for some of us, that's really huge. So you can get to spinning this evening with National Vinyl Record Day. Whether it is Zeppelin or the Beatles or a little Elvis or some Johnny Cash, vinyl records have a sound all their own. And many of you know what I'm talking about. Most will agree that vintage vinyl is as much of a classic as the bands themselves. This day actually encourages all to listen to all kinds of music on vinyl records. Of course, all my vinyl is rock and roll, but hey, listen to what you got, right? You know, when vinyl records first came on the market, they had other names. Some of them were called gramophone records or phonograph records. Now, those were all pre-DC days because in my day, they were just called Plano records. But vinyl is an analog sound storage medium consisting of a flat freaking vinyl disc. The sound recorded is recorded, but you didn't know I knew words like that. Depending on the speed of the sound that it was recorded, the vinyl record will need to be played at a specific speed on the record player. This is referred to as rotational speed. <laughs> PMs of the more popular my data keeps going in and out so I don't know if I'll be able to finish this or not other features of vinyl records included reproductive accuracy or fidelity such as high fidelity or hi-fi reminds me of a ZZ Top song orthophonic and full range their time capacity were long playing or single, and the number of channels of audio provided were either mono, stereo, or even quadraphonic. Vinyl records were also sold in different sizes, such as 12 inch, 10 inch, 7 inch. By 1991, vinyl records left the mainstream. It was a sad day, guys sad. However, manufacturers continue to produce them. Collectors and audiophiles increasingly desire the unique sound that only vinyl can produce. You know, since 2006, vinyl record sales have continued to increase. Even more dramatic sales started hitting the markets beginning in 2012. So they're coming back. Justin Pickard's even doing vinyl. I guess you're wondering how you can observe this day, right? I know you're thinking that, so I'm gonna tell you. You can stop by a vinyl record store in your town if you can find one. Oh, there are some. And while browsing through the selections, you can reminisce about the good old days. 
if you remember the good old days, you can like touch the vinyl, you can look at all the cover art, lots of ways to celebrate. One thing you can do too is on social media, you can share your finds in the vinyl record store. You've only got a, probably an hour or so before they close. But you can use pound sign, vinyl record, oh no, hashtag, vinyl record day to post on social media. I'm gonna start calling hashtags pound signs because that's what they used to call them. And I'm old school. Guys, there is a little history to this story. Do you know who actually invented the phonograph? It's too hot out here to wait on your answer. It was Thomas Edison. 1877. Man, we're blessed because of Thomas Edison. Because of Thomas Edison, I can go home tonight and throw some vinyl on the turntable and drop the freaking needle. Now guys, I want to talk about some rock and roll for just a minute. On this day in rock history is a big day. The year is 1968 and Led Zeppelin played for the very first time, setting in motion one of the next decade's most intriguing musical journeys ever. And I mean ever. On this day in 68, in a small space on Gerard Street in the West End of London, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham played together for the very first time. Man, the first song the band, which would later be known as Led Zeppelin, tore into was The Train Kept a Rollin', which was a fixture in Page's previous band, The Yardbirds. According to Led Zeppelin's website, the chemistry was instant. We first played together in a small room, a basement room, recalled John Paul Jones. There was just wall-to-wall -wall amps, probably thanks to Jimmy Page and a space for the door, and that was it. Literally, it was everyone looking at each other. What shall we play? As they kicked into gear, the whole room just exploded, said Jones. Even though the band was still known as the New Yardbirds at that time, they were off to a strong and fresh start, and everyone felt the electricity. I remember the little room. All I can remember, it was hot and it sounded good, said Plant. Very exciting, very challenging, really. It felt like we'd found something that we had to be very careful with because we might lose it. And they did when John Henry Bonham died. But it was remarkable, the power. The band would play its first concert on September 7th, the name change would come a little more than a month later, on October, October 14th. Man. Exciting is the word Paige said about that first jam session. Princess Leia, I have your order at the counter. Leia, Princess Leia has got an order at the counter. How cool is that? Princess Leia's here. God, that's awesome. More of Han Solo's here too. <laughs> At the end, we knew that it was really happening, really electrifying, said Paige. In 1960, Pete Best auditioned for the job as drummer for the Beatles, though, as we now know, he would soon be replaced. <laughs> 17 years later, in 1977, I bet a bunch of you graduated that year. Good year. Henry Petavani lost or left his job as the police's original guitarist, sentencing himself to the same rock and roll purgatory. Former Dire Straits frontman Mark Knopfler celebrates a birthday today, while fans of the late Les Paul remember the guitar hero's sad passing. I told you it was a big day. This August 12th is like full of cool stuff. Cheap Thrills, perhaps Janis Joplin's best known album, was issued by Big Brother and The Holding Company on this day. Metallica released their biggest ever album on this day. And last but not least, the Rolling Stones began preparing for one of their biggest tours ever by playing an intimate Steel Wheels pre-tour surprise show on this day in 1989 at Toad's Place in New Haven, Connecticut. 
with a local act, Sons of Bob, opening the show for an audience of only 700 people who had purchased tickets for $3.01 a piece. Now, wouldn't you like to have been there for that show? They played 10 songs that night. This would be the last live concerts for the band with member Bill Wyman on bass guitar. This tour would also be the longest the band had ever done up to that point, playing over twice as many shows as their standard tour length from the 1960s and 1970s. Well guys, all good things come to an end and that's going to wrap my rock history lessons for the day. But before I go, let me tell you, I got stickers. I got stickers. A $5 donation to my high speed data fund and you get a sticker for every $5 donation. And it's going to a worthwhile cause so I can bring you high speed content just like this. So all you gotta do is message me or click the link in this post when I get it there. And the three stooges I have your order. Three stooges are here too, wow. Mo, Larry, Curly, come on down, get your burger. <laughs> and if you guys are not a subscriber, I'm not really frozen, I was just kidding. But if you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, you should be. So go there, click the red subscribe button, it's free and it simply notifies you when I post new freaking content, which I know you don't want to miss out on. So youtube.com forward slash Barside Job Live will get you there. Click the red subscribe button, it helps me, knows who's out there supporting what I'm doing and get you notified when I post new stuff. Now guys, I'm all ready. I'm all prepared for my two shows at Vocal Media this week, Tuesday and Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Got a great lineup. So I'll be seeing you guys very soon, like tomorrow evening, 7.30 p.m. Go to vocalnow.com, vocal with a K. Look for the vocal live image just to the right, the fuzz box. If you're on your phone, or if you're in a browser, go south from the zoo and fuzz box. You'll see vocal live image. Click on it at 7.30. Not until, not at, not at 7.29, at 7.30. Actually, just wait till 7.31. Then you'll click on the vocal live image. Because it probably won't appear until like showtime. So, I don't know. I have to ask Jay. Hey guys, I really do appreciate you hanging with me during this daily dose. And I want you to have an awesome week. Please like and share these posts. It helps, I promise you. And share it with your Facebook friends. I will see you guys tomorrow. So peace, love, and keep on rocking. I'll see you soon. As long as my high speed data or Wi-Fi connection works with me. Okay guys, I'll see you soon, thanks.